Item Number SCP-501 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-501 is kept in a securely locked opaque safe in a cell 5 meters by 5 meters by 5 meters in Site 3. The cell is guarded by two Level 2 security guards, who undergo daily psychological evaluations. The interior of the cell must also be monitored at all times by no fewer than two security cameras, with a separate guard observing the monitor for each camera. These cameras must be connected to a backup generator so they will continue functioning in the event of a blackout. All requests for experiments must be cleared by at least three overseers. Any personnel attempting to gain unauthorized access to SCP-501's containment cell will be either detained for psychological evaluation or terminated, depending on clearance level. Description. Due to the nature of SCP-501's psychological effects when viewed, it is difficult to ascertain an accurate visual description. According to reports from D-Class personnel who have had visual contact with SCP-501, it is an American $1 bill that radiates a glowing amber aura. Robotically controlled chemical analysis indicates that it is chemically identical to ordinary dollar bills. When a person views SCP-501, they are immediately overwhelmed by a desire to obtain it. Studies with D-Class personnel have shown that this desire fades after a time, but that the time increases exponentially the longer SCP-501 is viewed. Further studies have shown that those affected by SCP-501 will stop at nothing to fulfill their desire, willingly resorting to violence and even self-mutilation to achieve their goal. Viewing SCP-501 indirectly through a monitor or while wearing vision-reducing goggles does not seem to hinder SCP-501's effect in any way. An experiment was conducted to ascertain the effect of SCP-501 on individuals who are successful in obtaining it. D-Class member D-501 was chained to the wall of the containment cell, and all other personnel were evacuated from the cell. The security monitors were briefly switched off as a programmed robotic arm opened the safe containing SCP-501, allowing D-501 to view it briefly. The arm then proceeded to move SCP-501 onto a machine in the cell that hermetically sealed SCP-501 in an opaque, jet-black steel case. Researchers then re-entered the cell and unchained D-501 from the wall, allowing him to obtain the sealed SCP-501, at which point the researchers moved to a safe viewing location to observe the actions of D-501. A speaker was placed on the ceiling, and researchers were instructed to grant all requests made by D-501 that would not involve releasing him from a cell would not result in possible visual exposure of the researchers to SCP-501 and would not violate safety or security protocols. The test began at 1.43 p.m. October 20, 2009 1.43 p.m. Subject acquires the sealed SCP-501. Subject stares at it without blinking for 10 minutes. Some researchers believe that the subject is still able to see SCP-501, even through its sealed case. October 20, 2009, 1.53 p.m. Subject suddenly stops staring and begins to strip all of his clothing. Researchers hear him muttering, I must remove the contamination, repeatedly, as he does this. October 20, 2009, 1.55 p.m. Subject throws all the removed clothing into the corner of the room, after which he looks into the speaker and requests a razor. Request tentatively granted. The razor is carried in by an armed security guard. Subject takes the item and the guard leaves. Subject immediately and violently shaves off all the hair on his body and discards it in the same corner as his clothes. Subject cuts himself several times in the process, but does not seem to react or notice. As he shaves, he is heard over the speaker repeatedly muttering, Be gone, unwanted possessions. Subject discards the razor, in a similar fashion to his hair and clothes, after he finishes using it. October 20, 
2009, 2 p.m. Subject enters a lotus position and begins to meditate without closing his eyes or taking his eyes off of the sealed SCP-501. October 20, 2009, 2.23 p.m. Subject is heard whispering, I see, to himself. He stands up and looks again at the speaker. He says, I hereby renounce all my worldly possessions other than the Holy One. I do not need anything other than the Holy One. Everything else is a contamination and must be forsaken. A researcher acknowledges the request, after which the subject immediately returns to his meditative stance. October 24, 2009, 12 p.m. Subject ceases breathing. Subject has not moved since he resumed his meditation on October 20, 2009, and is presumed to have died of thirst. End log.